what's happening, everybody out here? Uh, so now the the uh, dust is starting to settle a little bit with regard to, you know, the uh, S550 Boss 429 car or uh, you know a 427 Mustang and so on. Uh, I've been in touch with some people who are very close to this situation, and I'm told that the new engine is not going to be a dual overhead cam motor. Uh, it's going to be a cam and block motor, a pushrod motor. Now, I was pretty bummed when I first heard that. Um, you know, I was really hoping for a dual overhead cam motor. It's a great, efficient design. They make a lot of power. You know, it's uh, it's Ford's trademark. It's their brand identity. You know, so I'm, I'm a little upset that they're abandoning the idea of building a dual overhead cam engine for the, tr for the trucks and, and for some other specialty vehicles. But, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a pushrod motor. Um, there are some advantages to pushrod motors. They're cheaper to build, they're more compact, uh, they're lighter. You know, there's lots of good things about it. The, the, um, the LS guys are very quick to point that out. But uh, I, I really find it hard to believe that Ford is going to go back in time and just build a, you know, a, a, an old-style pushrod motor. I've been in touch with somebody who's very close to the situation. Uh, he, inf he informed me that he's actually seen this new motor and it looks very much like a 385 series of Ford Big Block from years ago. You know, a 429, 460 type motor. Um, so, you know, uh, I mean, that's all kind of cool. It, it, it makes sense. You know, most pushrod motors, they're just pushrod motors. They look the same. But I really find it hard to believe that Ford is just going to build a basic pushrod motor and just, you know, put this old technology in their cars. Uh, or their trucks in, in this case. You know, um... I, I'm, rem I'm, I'm remembering something from, I think it was 2007, uh, when Mopar used the Mali Cam and Cam technology uh, in their Viper engine, in, in the V10. That year, uh, that engine picked up a lot of power. Um, the technology exists to use that technology with twin phasers to phase the intake and the exhaust events uh, independently, very much like a double overhead cam engine. Uh, in the case of the Viper, they elected to leave the intake uh, events in a fixed position and only phase the exhaust. Uh, that really worked for them because they made a lot of power with that motor. You know, I, I have to believe uh, that with this new Ford pushrod motor, that that kind of technology has to be in the motor. I, I just can't believe that they're going to build an old-style old motor, uh, you know, with a single cam. If they could phase the intake and exhaust vents in the events independently uh, with a cam and block engine, uh, this is a little bit of a game changer because basically that's what the dual overhead cam engines do. They're able to do that uh, because the, the you know the intake cams are, are separate from the exhaust cam, so they move them around independently, effectively changing the lobe separation angle of the cam at any point in the RPM range. Um, this is something that, you know, you say an LS motor can't do. LS motor's got one cam, solid cam, the lobes are in a fixed position relative to each other. So the lobe separation angle never changes. Uh, you know, they advance and retard the cam for a little bit more top end, a little bit more bottom end, but it really doesn't have the flexibility that a dual overhead cam has. So I'm really hoping that Ford develops this technology for this new motor. Uh, maybe this is wishful thinking in, on, on my part, you know, maybe it is. But, you know, I trust my instincts. I really do believe Ford has done this because it's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, to, to go back in time and build an old style motor, you know, that, that doesn't make any sense. But to add some new technology to it and then take advantage of the advantages of a pushrod motor, you know, its overall size would be decreased. I mean, even though the block is a little bit bigger, you don't have these big heads with the cans on top. You know, you don't have all of that kind of stuff. You don't have all the timing chains and, and all of those things in the front that take up that space. So you could have a, a bigger engine in a smaller compact size. You know, sounds good to me. It would fit an S550. And if it was configured that way, it would actually make a lot of power. So I'm really hoping for this. Um, you know, if it doesn't happen that way and they're just building a big old torque motor for a truck and, and uh, doing it that way, well, if they do that and they just drop this motor into a, into a Mustang and call it a Boss 429, I can't see that this car is going to perform any better uh, or probably not nearly as good as a GT500 or a GT350 or even a finely tuned, you know, Mustang GT. 
I mean, nowadays, a, a five liter Mustang, you pop a turbo or a supercharger on it, and you're making, you know, seven, 800, even 900 horsepower pretty easily. It's pretty common these days. So, uh, you know, we're just gonna have to see what happens. I'm, I'm really hoping uh, that Ford uh, has got something up their sleeve on this one. So I'm gonna stay on top of this subject, guys. Uh, as the information comes in, I'll bring it to you. Uh, but um, that's about it for today. So until next time, Coyote Car Guy, over and out.